This film is brought to you by New York Life and its dedicated agents. Proud sponsors of the NFL's team highlight films. New York Life, the company you keep. This afternoon, the road to the Super Bowl takes us to the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The NFC playoffs move on to the semifinal round as the Chicago Bears, champions of the NFC Central Division, face the New York Giants, champions of the NFC East. On a crisp, clear January Sunday, the Chicago Bears' road to the Super Bowl came to an end. It took the best team in pro football to do it. It's amazing what can be accomplished when no one gets the credit. In 1990, the Bears wrote a remarkable story, and they authored it as a team. Before the season even began, Mike Ditka stressed one concept. Team pride. Team unity. Team work. Team victory. Long count by Harbaugh, he takes and he's back to throw in the pocket with time, airs it out of the right side, he's got Jeff yeah. Reeves. Throw Pete. Pete sets up under pressure in the oh, yeah. Yeah. The football picked up by Jeff. Come on, He's ahead of the field of the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Richard Dick. Bailey makes a catch of the five. He's straight ahead to the 10, 15, 20, and the kick. Cut the right down the line. He is ahead of the field. 40, 50, 25, 40. He's able to run away. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Johnny Instead of concerning themselves with what many said they couldn't do, the Bears took matters into their own hands. They ran the ball and hit. For the sixth time in seven seasons, Chicago won the Central Division title and rejoined the NFL's elite. But above all, they did it as a team. Since the earliest days, the bedrock of the Bears has always been its defense. In 1989, that foundation showed signs of crumbling. Last year, there were times when we went out on the field and we couldn't stop anybody. We were just demoralized. It's insulting to have a team, you know, kind of have their way with you like teams did with us last year. Anytime that you have two out of 11 guys playing the whole season, then it doesn't take a Phi Beta Kappa to understand or realize that that defense is going to have problems. That was a big thing that we had to work on was our attitude is that uh, we are the Bears. We expect to be number one in defense in the National Football League uh, point-wise as well as yardage and uh, uh, that's the thing that we had to get back. In week one, the Bears shut out Seattle allowing six first downs. Then they crushed Green Bay. They were playing bare defense once more. They pounded their way to a third straight win by slicing up Herschel and the Vikings. Veteran defenders were leading the way. We try to show the guys that you've got to play it with, with a big heart. You know, you see a guy out there like Singletary or Michael or Richard Dan or Fridge knocking the hell out of people. You know, you better join the join the bunch, or you're going to be left behind. And I think that that's what we show those kids. You've got to go out there and prove it each and every day. Mike Singletary led the team in tackles. 
on the way to his eighth straight Pro Bowl. Richard Dent was everywhere and paced the team in sacks. While Dent protected the flank, Steve McMichael stood firm up the middle. In 1990, William Perry was rejuvenated as the fridge body slammed runners, at times with one hand. Jim Morrissey kept the short pass short. Ron Rivera picked off a pair as experienced Bears were leading by example. Hitmen like Sean Gale. Gale's seventh season was his finest as he captained a young secondary and spearheaded the final line of defense. A unit ranked 25th just a year before skyrocketed to sixth and allowed nearly 100 fewer points. Making it all possible were rookies and young players who were raw but reckless. We've got some guys who are in their second and third year now and, and they've been around here a while and it's, it's just starting to rub off if you see another player uh, run 30 yards across the field and, and dive just to get his helmet on the ball carrier. Hey, that's pretty neat. I want to do that too. Trace Armstrong was September's Defensive Player of the Month and improved dramatically in his second season. Other two-year men like John Roper, number 55, and Marcus Paul were young Turks who raised their level of play as the Bears led the NFL with 31 interceptions. Lemuel Stenson grabbed the starting cornerback spot and six interceptions while David Tate punished receivers. As a rookie, Donnell Wolford was asked to cover the league's best. That trial by fire tempered him in 1990. Newcomer Ron Cox joined with the Bears of the present to carry on the proud tradition forged long ago. In a true team approach, there is room for the individual. The individual who places team goals above his own. A special kind of competitor like Mark Carrier, Chicago's MC Hammer. Mark Carrier was Defensive Rookie of the Year a pro bowler in his first season, and a true impact player. A star was born in a spectacular performance against the Redskins. It's the handoff on the reverse to Mott. Back to the ribbon going deep. Down the right sideline. Got a man out there, and it's broken. Yeah! Sucked into the end zone by Mark Carrier. Ripping under a blitz. Roper dumps it off the oh! side. Through the hands of Sanders. Intercepted by Carrier. His seventh interception of the season. Second of the game. Rippin straight back to throw. Rippin under pressure. Hit by oh, Cox. Sure. Right goes deep down the middle. Going for Clark. And it's yeah! Carrier! His third of the game. His eighth of the season. And he took it away from the Redskin receiver. Carrier's electrifying trifecta brought him ever closer to the Bears' single season mark. Number 10 and the record came against Tampa Bay. Testaverde in the pocket. Scrambling left. Testaverde looking to make a play. Throws the left side. In 1989, the Bears won their first four games, then faded from the race. In 1990, they marched into the Coliseum at 3-0 and lost 24-10. But this time, there would be no tailspin, no fade to black. We had a very disappointing loss in Los Angeles. I think right now we're going to find out what we're made of. I know that a lot of people are very down and very despondent, but I think that what we have to do is be leaders of the offensive line on offense and the defensive line on defense. We didn't get it done last week, and for us to get it done each and every week is very important to this team. 
I'm going to make sure that I relate to everybody how important it is to put that chip back on for this game because this could decide the entire season right here. Slot to the left side of the tight ends. I formation backfield. Give to Anderson off right tackle to the end zone. Touchdown! The Bears rebounded and pounded the Packers. The first of six straight victories. Nine four nation in the backfield. Anderson the tail of the tandem. Fake Anderson rolling right time tackle over the middle. And goes. Touchdown, Bosal! The following week, Chicago rolled up 38 points, scoring on their first four possessions. Harbaugh takes drops back to throw. Waiting, throws the right side of the end zone. Anderson. Harbaugh takes, sets up on the left side. Harbaugh takes it himself, straight ahead to the 10 to the 5. Harbaugh to the yeah. end zone. Touchdown! Anderson deployed a motion to the right side. Harbaugh takes, drops back to throw. Has some time now, floats it over the left side. Morris wide open. Touchdown! It was Bear football, team football, as five different Bears scored in a rout of the Rams. With each win, the Bear banner was raised higher and higher in a streak made possible by an offensive line with 42 years of experience. The men up front had the Bears out in front. All pros Jay Hilkenberg and Mark Bortz stood united with Tom Thayer, John Wojciechowski, a resurgent Jim Covert, and Iron Man Keith Van Horn. In Phoenix, Jerry Fontenot did the snapping for a sidelined Hilgenberg in a dominant display of power football. The front wall played as one so much so that the entire line was named Offensive Player of the Week. Blocks were crisp and sustained. The Bears rushed for a season-high 223 yards and steamrolled the Cardinals, building a 28-7 halftime lead. They were in the midst of a streak that would give them a stranglehold on another division title. A title fought for one big play at a time. First down Bears, 33 yard line, split backfield, receivers right and left. And back to throw Harbaugh. Harbaugh in the pocket, winds up, Rainbow's right side, he's got a man wide open. Across the 25 and a run left to the end zone for the touchdown! Jim Harbaugh set a completion percentage record with the help of Ron Morris and fired 173 in a row without an interception. Harbaugh was resourceful, as was Peter Tom Willis, who rifled his first pro TD to Wendell Davis. The clutch play of Dennis Gentry was vital, as were the acrobatics of James Thornton. Every offense needs a battering ram, a bludgeon. For Chicago, it was Brad Muster, the prototype big game fullback. Muster did more than bull for the tough yards and move the chains. He led the team with 42 catches. And when the Bears needed to bang it in, Muster did just that. Put backs, receivers left and right. Harbaugh takes, gives to Muster. Off the left side, cuts yeah! it back to the ball. Touchdown! Brad Muster on a 10-yard touchdown run off the left side. And he left two Broncos on their back in the end zone. Chicago's game plan was simple and straightforward. Get the ball, 
Move the ball, keep the ball. Neil Anderson was the means to that end. For the third straight year, Anderson rushed for over a thousand yards, turned short into long, and made the impossible seem routine. And Harbaugh on first down is back to go throw. Go deep, go Harbaugh deep. Harbaugh deep down the right sideline, going for Anderson. Oh, the <laughs> Anderson was both workhorse and thoroughbred. His 1,562 all-purpose yards made him the complete back, and his 13 touchdowns made him the Bears' scoring machine. Harbaugh, long count takes, hands it off to Anderson, bouncing left to the outside. He's to the 10 to the 5. Yes! The running backs are split, and here's the give Anderson up. Yeah! Yeah! Back to throw, Harbaugh pops the left side for Anderson. Yeah! Over the shoulder, catch is made. Touchdown! Touchdown! Right. Anderson going wide, sweeping left, makes the oh. turn to the end zone. Touchdown! Thornton tight end, left side of the line. Harbaugh takes the snap, gives it off to Anderson, starts He's left, puts it back to the left. Oh. He's got it. The Bears were seven and one, winners of four in a row. They returned home to teach a lesson. That lesson, actions speak louder than words. Stop, wild time. This is the man right here, baby. Nationwide. And we gonna win it for him today. Today. Yeah. One team boasted of victory, the other team won. It was showtime as the Bears prevailed in a battle royale. For the five to the end zone. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Running backs are split. Harbaugh takes, sets up short, pop flies the right side of the end zone. Oh, oh. Touchdown! What Wendell a catch! Davis. Sensational grab by Davis in the right corner of the end zone. The Falcons predicted a long day for Lemuel Stenson. Stenson calmly picked off a pair. Up. Now, Rainbow's the right side, and it's going to be intercepted by Stinson. In this main event, Richard Dent was the ultimate warrior with two sacks and the knockout blow. I wasn't going to do this, but I think I'm going to do it anyways. This is a very special day for me because we did win. Uh, we won the championship belt buckle. <laughs> In December, rookie Fred Washington died tragically. It was a heartbreaking loss that the Bear family somehow overcame, although they'll never forget. Staying the course through adversity has been a Mike Ditka trademark. He was, is, and always will be a Chicago Bear. During the playoff push, Ditka was at his best presiding over a pair of critical overtime wins. 44-yard field goal attempt to win it. Garm extended, waiting for the snap. Here it is. Placement made, picked by Butler. Sails to the uprights and hit it. Yeah! <laughs> Kevin Butler, the Bears' all-time field goal leader, beat Denver deep into the fifth quarter. And two weeks later, Neil Anderson was the man, and 69 double seam was the play that beat Detroit in another overtime thriller. Slot to the left side. Anderson is split wide to the right. Harbaugh takes the snap from Hilgenberg back to throw. Harbaugh winds up, heaves the right side for Anderson over the yeah! The Bears were division champions, champions who gathered together four weeks later to bid farewell to a true warrior. And ladies and gentlemen, playing his last regular season game at Soldier Field after a great 12-year career in a Chicago Bear uniform at right tackle, number 99 from Arkansas, Dan. Dan Hampton will be remembered for his epic battles waged in the trenches. His true essence is captured in the fact that he endured knee operations, 
was named to four All-Pro teams and wore the Bear colors in three different decades. Dan Hampton was a true hero. He played the game the way it was meant to be played. And Chicago fans will long remember his inspirational play. Hamp and his mates went out winners in their home game playoff finale. Tom Zach sets up short in the pocket, throws the right flat, got his man to Thornton, a 15, yeah. 10, 5 to the end zone, touchdown! Beating the Saints was expected, and when they did, 16 to 6. But the victory was not the crowning achievement. It merely underscored how a team, picked to finish fourth by some, could collect themselves, win a title, and achieve success as a team. Sometimes these things maybe aren't as pretty as people want them to be, but we're really proud of the way our guys hung in there and played. Our defense was relentless. Well, they played the way uh, we expect Bear defense to play. And it was a good victory for us, and now we got to go on to bigger and better things, we hope, and uh, that's our goal. Teamwork, team unity, team pride, team victory. From start to finish, all for one and one for all. They recaptured the division title. Now, as a team, they set their sights even higher. <laughs>